he's the leader that will lead us to the promised land. Let's get rid of this system, and he's the man to do it. Ah, uh, there's only one Don King. Only one Don. I want to thank you very much. And uh, Don, that was so special. I spoke to Don yesterday. I said, how about taking a trip to Cleveland? He said, I love Cleveland. This is his place. And I said, I'd love to have you uh, introduce me. And he was right there. And we left at 6 o'clock in the morning. He was right there. And he's an amazing guy, and he's been a friend of mine for a long time. And I don't want to say he's a good guy because I don't want to destroy his reputation. <laughs> but he is a good guy. He's a phenomenal person. And uh, he became very rich. He was very smart. He uh, took advantage of lots of situations. And I have great respect for that. And I have great respect for him. And I want to thank Don for being here. Thank you, Don. I want to certainly thank my friend, uh, Daryl Scott, who's just an amazing guy. Amazing guy. I met Daryl through Michael, and then I saw Daryl on television. I called Michael. I said, this man is fantastic. Where do you find somebody like this? I have to really get to know him a little better. And I have gotten to know him better. And he is a, uh, he's, he's spectacular. And I watch him on television. And I feel so sorry for the people that are on the other side of the table. Because I've, I've only seen you about 100 times so far. Nobody else has won. He knows, he knows how to win. And he loves you folks, I will tell you that. He loves you folks and he loves this church. So, Daryl, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Pastor Scott. Pastor Scott. And, Michael, thank you not only for the introduction, but also for a beautiful speech. I think Michael worked very hard on that speech. <laughs> ben Carson has been uh, my friend for a long time. And he was tough. He was tough. Where's ben? He was tough. I'll tell you what. I was doing really well, but there was one guy in the pack every week. I'd look at those polls. So Ben was at, I was at 28, 29. Ben was like at 10. Then the next week he was at 12. And I had to be so nice. He's such an incredible guy. And then he was at 14 and 16 and 20. And he went to 21, 24. I said, what do we do to stop this guy? He was a force and he was so nice. He did better than anybody, I will tell you. He did better than anybody. It was, uh, it was amazing. I'll tell you what, he was amazing. And he's got, not only is he a brilliant guy, but he's got a, a brilliant heart. He loves people. And if all of this happens, there will be a great place for Ben. I don't know if he wants that, but I know he wants to help people. But there will be a great place for him. And General Flynn, another man who's just so incredible. Oh, boy. There's a tough general. I always talk about MacArthur. I'm a big fan of General Douglas MacArthur and General George Patton. And if they saw what was going on today with uh, all the butchery, and all of the problems, uh, they, they're spinning in their grave right now at the way we fight. Because we have to end that problem. And this is a man that knows how to end problems. And General Flynn, along with General Kellogg and some of our other friends, we have so many friends. Uh, we have over 200 generals and admirals supporting us now. Can you imagine that? I didn't know they had that many. I didn't know they had that many generals and admirals. But we've had, and then the other day you probably saw that we had 17 Congressional Medal of Honor winners endorse me. So we had the admirals, we had the generals, and we had the Congressional Medal of Honor winners. And 
uh, it's been it's been really an amazing period of time. So I just want to thank everybody. And I want to thank the African-American community because I don't know if you've been watching, but the poll numbers are going like a rocket ship. It's amazing. I think initially, where I was very low, I think initially they didn't know what to expect. And as I spoke about the inner cities, which are in such trouble, and uh, I spoke about instances like we're having today with Charlotte and Tulsa and problems, and we want to see that unify as quickly as possible. Those are two problems that we have to get that unified and taken care of. It's sad to see. But as I spoke about the inner cities and what I'll do, and it's interesting because I went down a list of problems in the inner cities. And I'd said this three or four times before, and I go down the list, and we talk about the incredible crime. Incredible. Uh, Chicago, I think, has had 3,000 shootings, as an example from just the beginning of the year. 3,000, and thousands of people are being killed, and it's very horrible. But I talked about the crime, I talked about the lack of education, the bad schools, and I talked about jobs. The jobs are just so bad. And I, I said it three, four, five times, and then one day I said, what do you have to lose? I mean, what do you have to lose? I'm gonna fix it. What do you have to lose? And somehow that resonated. Some people didn't like it. But I said, what difference does it make? I mean, it's, it's, it's true. What do you have to lose? And it resonated, and it's been amazing how it's resonated, because it's true. The Democrats have run the inner cities for, in some cases, up to 100 years, unbroken. Unbroken. And we're very different. I'm different. And I'm different from a lot of Republicans, frankly. And that's why we're winning states that aren't even in play for other Republicans. We're... I mean, as an example, somebody said we're up in Maine. Maine's not a state where Republicans are exactly, you know, flocking to. But we're up in Maine. It's an amazing, amazing thing. We're doing great in Connecticut. We're doing great all over, actually. So we're winning Florida. We're winning Ohio. I see we're winning North Carolina. We're winning, uh, we're winning, it's just an amazing thing. We're winning uh, Colorado. We're up four points. And we're up in other places that are just amazing places and great. And we're thrilled. We just had a very good poll from New Mexico. New Mexico. So we're winning areas that are not usually areas that people consider in play. That's why you're seeing the boards. Remember the boards three, four weeks ago? The whole electoral map. Well, Trump has a very... Now all of a sudden, all these states are opening up to say, wait a minute, what's going on here? And they're writing about it. And we are working very, very hard. And hopefully at the end. And I want to also, I have to thank Mike Pence. What an unbelievable person. And... You know, the first time I met Mike, I liked him a lot. And he was very much considered that this was going to be his position. A lot of people wanted him to run. He's done, right? He's run uh, incredibly in Indiana, very, very popular, has one of the most successful states. They have a AAA bond rating. Their taxes have gone down. Their employment has been incredible. And they brought companies in, one of the few places that has actually brought companies. It's been a great story. And, and the story he's done is incredible. But the first time I met him, we had a wonderful meeting, lasted 20 minutes, and I actually asked him for his endorsement because I was running in Indiana, which we won in a landslide, which was running. And he couldn't do that because of the fact that he had other commitments, and he endorsed Ted Cruz. But the next day when he made the endorsement, I thought it was more of an endorsement for me because he started talking about how great Donald Trump is, then he said, I'm voting for Ted Cruz, and let's get back to Donald Trump. The guy's unbelievable. <laughs> In fact, Ted Cruz didn't know whether or not he was endorsed. Most people thought he endorsed me. I thought it was one of the great. But I liked him. I liked him, regardless. I liked him a lot. But he said something. After that first 15 or 20 minutes, I left. And he said, Donald, may we pray? Now, that doesn't happen too often, coming from New York, when I leave an office. It's usually like uh, they have bad thoughts, <laughs> believe me.
bad, bad thoughts. But he said, did you know that, Pastor? He said, may we pray. Now Daryl's really inspired by Mike. But Mike is great. And we did pray. And Mike is great, and his family, Karen, and the family are incredible. So that was a really good choice. I wrote some things out that I think so much about. Thank you. Thank you. Stand up, Mike. Karen, stand up. Amazing. He's been an amazing partner, and he's all over the place. Yesterday he was in Virginia, and it was a downpour. They had a great group of people, and it was I never want him to get the kind of crowds I get because I'll probably then get angry at him and jealous. But he'll teach me not to be jealous. Something Daryl's going to work with. But, but he had a great crowd yesterday in Virginia, and there was this massive downpour, like record type setting, and they were all outside, I guess on a lawn, and they were drenched. And he said, call me up, he said, nobody left. And the press actually covered it. They said, nobody left. They've never seen anything like it. And that's a good sign, because I think we're going to do really well in Virginia, too. So that's a good sign. So Michael, thank you. And very special, very special guy. And Amorosa, don't leave Amorosa. She's a wonderful woman. Don't leave. She's a wonderful woman. She has done so much for me with the African American community, with communities generally. Uh, and she's another one. She is such a fine person, and nobody knows it. And I just blew her income for the next 20 years. You are amazing, okay? And I just want to thank you very much for everything you've done. She works so hard. She feels so strongly. Thank you. Amaros. I mean, I did help make her a star, in all fairness. I don't feel, I don't feel so guilty. So thank you. I, I wrote some things out having to do largely with uh, inner cities and the inner city right here. And uh, I'll read it out for you, but I, I feel very strongly about it. So much can be done. So much can be done, and it's not being done. They come and they take your vote, and then they say, we'll see you in four years. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you in four years, and we're going to do it a lot differently. For centuries, the African-American church has been the conscience of our country. It's from the pews, pulpits, and Christian teachings of black churches all across the land that the Civil Rights Movement lifted up the soul of our nation. It's from these views that our nation has been inspired toward a better moral character, a deeper concern for mankind, and a spirit of charity and unity that binds us all together. The African-American faith community has been one of God's greatest gifts to America and to the American people. There is perhaps no action our leaders can take that would do more to heal, and I mean heal, our country and support our people than to provide a greater platform, stronger, greater, to the black churches and churchgoers. I was in Detroit recently with Bishop Jackson, who was an incredible guy also. And it was incredible what I saw. The love in that room, and I'm not saying the love for me, I'm just saying the love in that room for everybody. And the spirit, even the song. His wife is a beautiful singer with a magnificent way. The play, it was just amazing. I didn't want to leave. So it's great. You do right every day by your community and your family. You raise children in the light of God. I will always support your church and defend your right to worship, always. I will always be there. I am here today to listen to your message. And I hope my presence here will help, and very much help, your voice to reach new audiences. It's going to happen in our country. And these are people, believe me, many people out there that desperately need it. 
Christian faith is not the past, but the present and the future. It is the foundation of progress. And I pledge to you that if I win, some people say if and when, let's say if, because we have to be realistic, close race. But if you all go out and vote, we're going to win. But I pledge to you that we're going to end the Johnson Amendment, which takes away the voice of your pastors, your ministers, your great leaders, takes away their voice. We're going to end quickly, quickly, the Johnson Amendment. Uh, that's so important. Thank you. It's taken away your voice. Passed in 1954 by a very powerful man, Lyndon Johnson. Because he didn't get along with a certain church, they say, in Houston. Because the pastor was maybe against him, maybe not with him, maybe something was going on. It shows you the power of Lyndon Johnson. No respect. You have to respect it. But he had this past that takes away your leaders and your your people that you most respect. People like Pastor Darrell Scott. He's not allowed to talk politics. If he does, they take away his tax exemption. So what they're doing is they're silencing your leaders. They're silencing the people that you want to hear. It's not fair, because they're the people I want to hear also. So we're going to get rid of the Johnson Amendment. As I campaign all across this nation, and in every community, I will have an opportunity to lay out my plans for economic change. I will have a chance to discuss school choice, which is so important, and how to put every American on the ladder to success, meaning a great education and a great job. But today, I just want to let you know that I am here to listen. To you, I'm going to listen, and I'm always going to listen. It's a promise that I make. I'm running to be president for all Americans, every single one. Our nation is too divided. We talk past each other constantly, not to each other. And to those who seek office, we do not do enough to step in to the community and learn what is happening and what is going on. They don't do it. Again, they want your vote, and they're done. I'm here today to learn so that we can together remedy injustice in all of its many very unattractive forms. Our political system has failed the people and works only to enrich itself. I want to reform that system so that it works for you, all of you. I believe true reform can only come from outside the system, from outside the establishment. Becoming the nominee of the party of Abraham Lincoln has been the greatest honor of my life. It's on his legacy that I hope to build the future of our party. I believe we need a civil rights agenda for our time one that ensures the right to a good education and the right to live in safety and in peace. It also means the right, so true, so, so unsafe. When you see people being shot in the streets, walk into a store with their child, oftentimes their child being shot for no reason whatsoever, so sad. It also means the right to have a government that protects our workers and fights for our jobs. I want to rebuild our country, and I want to rebuild our inner cities. It's time. It's time. It breaks my heart to see any American left behind or to see a city like Cleveland that has had so many struggles. Nothing is more sad than when we sideline young Americans with unfulfilled potential. You look at somebody like Don King, where he's become so successful, he just broke that system. He wouldn't take no. I mean, he's an amazing inspiration to so many people, including me. Our whole country loses out. We're one nation 
And when anyone hurts, we all hurt together. That's the way it is. It's the way it should be, too. We are all brothers and sisters, and we're all created, all, everyone, created by the same God. We must love each other and support each other, and we're all in this together. I fully understand that the African-American community has suffered from discrimination and that there are many wrongs that must still be made right. I want to make America prosperous for everyone. I want to make this city the economic envy of the world. Here, in Detroit, in Baltimore, and there's so many places. We have so much work to do. Factories everywhere, new roads, new bridges, new schools, new hope. We're going to bring our jobs back. Our jobs have been taken away by inept politicians that don't know what they're doing. Our companies have left and gone to Mexico and other places. We're going to bring our jobs back, believe me. And it's not even going to be hard. I have been so greatly blessed and in so many ways with no greater blessing than my family, I have a wonderful family. <laughs> Nothing would make me happier and more fulfilled than to use what I have learned in business and in traveling the world, I have been all over, to bring wealth and prosperity and opportunity to those who have not had these opportunities before. When I see wages falling and falling Big league. People were making more money 18 years ago, in many cases, than they're making today. And today they're working harder and they have two jobs. It's not supposed to be that way. I know the hardships this inflicts and I am determined to do something about it. Please know this, for any who are hurting, things are going to turn and turn for the better. We are going to win again as a country, and we are going to win again for all of our people, not just certain segments of our people, for all of our people. I want to work with you to renew the bonds of trust between citizens and the bonds of faith that make our nation strong. America has been lifted out of many of its most difficult hours through the miracle of faith. And you people understand that very well. Everybody in this room understands it, which is one of the reasons you're here. Now, in these hard times for our country, let us turn again to our Christian heritage to lift up the soul of our nation. I am so deeply grateful to be here today. And it's my prayer that America and the America of tomorrow will be one of unity, togetherness, peace, and love. We can do that. I'd like to conclude with a passage from 1 John chapter 4. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. So true. So, Pastor, I want to thank you. I want to thank the congregation. Uh, this has been a really great honor for me, and we have some interesting days ahead. We have a little debate on Monday night. A couple of you might be watching. Anybody going to watch it today? And, and we have a very big election coming up on November 8th, so hopefully you can get out and vote. But again, to the African-American community, to the Hispanic community, to all communities, I want to just say we're going to make it right. We're going to make it great. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all.